Hello, this is David Benign from Excel Consulting. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to compare names that are in one list and not another in Power Query. So we're going to look at um, typical issues that could happen in name lists. So one typical one, something that's not in both lists, uh, misspellings and duplicates. Now, Classic Excel has ways to fix this, which is you can sort of highlight the duplicates using conditional formatting, or you can use the remove duplicates command. But the issue with that is it doesn't give you a direct link necessarily of where the duplicates are. You have to sort of read through them and see what there is. Um, and then there with VLOOKUPs, you can fix what's in one and not the other. You can just get an idea of it. But it's not, it's not exactly perfect. And to get just the list of what's missing, and it could be from thousands of items, you could filter it, but then it's kind of an inefficient way of doing it. So Power Query has other ways of dealing with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract um, just these. I'm not going to take the full name column. The full name is just one and concatenated with the other, uh, just to show you how this can work. So I'm going to go data and then from table or range, click OK. And it will pop up the Power Query window. So it's a brand new window that's not even Excel anymore. I love Power Query. This is one of the main things I love about it. Then I, I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to get just these two ones. Power Query is smart enough to get that. And I'm going to go data from table or range. All right, I sometimes get this error. Instead, I'm going to make it into a table first. Uh, there we go. And then I'm going to, well, this is good practice to make it into a table first and then call it here. Now you can't use uh, spaces, but list two names will work. And I'm going to do from table or range. I'm not sure why it, this is clearly a bug. It's done this to me before. I'm just going to delete that query there. So the Power Query editor allows you to make changes to your data, uh, or then refresh when your data comes in. The newest version even has these things. So you can apply through the column distribution um, and column profile. So off the bat, it even tells me actually that I have all of these are the duplicates. So San Tush and Tu. These these are possibly duplicates. It's not a duplicate with the given and family name, so we'll have to see that in a second, but it is possible to do with that. So I'm going to call this list one name. And then because this one has some blanks and also some lowercase, I'm going to do a few actions on it. So I'm going to select both columns, go to the transform tab choose format and trim. What that does is it takes off any spaces before, any spaces after thing. Uh, it doesn't replace double spaces with spaces though. So I'm going to still do that and replace values. And this is another change. I'm going to replace a double space with a space. There we go. And you know, I would probably do the same thing again, just in case you have those triple spaces. In this case, it wasn't necessary, but if you had triple spaces, it would still work, or if you had four as well. So uh, then we're going to go to format and capitalize each word. So this goes up like that. Power Query is case sensitive. So that is kind of an important feature. In list two names, those are already fixed for that. So I'm not going to repeat those steps. But I'm going to right click here and choose reference. And this is going to be this two duplicates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the table wide actions and choose keep duplicates. So it just keeps the values that are duplicated. And then 
rather than have these duplicated and just change a single value of them, so remove duplicates. <laughs> I know it sounds counterintuitive, keep and then remove, but this is the way you do it. So I'm going to add a column and choose a custom column. This is how you get into actually coding Power Query yourself. I'm just going to give it a name, so equals in speech marks, I'm just going to call it um, this. We'll see why when we get to the end stage. So this one the same, I'm going to reference it and I'm going to, I can also click on both columns, go to the home tab and keep duplicates, another way, and then remove, remove duplicates. Add column, custom column. Rename it here, give practice. And then I am going to click on this one. And I'm going to go to the Home tab and choose Merge Queries as new. I only recently found this out, but uh, you can actually multi-select the mergers. So I can click there and then click there with control, and it looks in both of them. So I'm going to merge that with list two names, not with the duplicates. Again, click here and click two. Uh, and then it will look for the columns that are the same. It says it's matched 19 out of 22 rows from the first table. In join kinds, you have a different kinds of join. So with VLOOKUP, you can only do a left outer where you return the same number of rows as in table one. In Power Query, you can do other ones. So this one will return only the rows that are featured in the first table. Press OK. And then that will create a new query, which I will call uh, in one, two. And I'm going to create an add one. First, I'm going to select these and right click, remove other columns. Get rid of that. And I'm going to custom column. In this one. Finally, I'm going to do the same the other way around. So this query, merge queries as new. List two names, I'm going to merge with list one name. One, one, two, one, two. Again, left anti. Uh, by the way, use fuzzy matching to perform the merge. This is a way to compare names that are similar. So you can say that they are, I'm not going to show you here, but it's a very cool thing that you can use for a similarity threshold. So let's say something, is, a name is 80% the same, but not 100%. You could use fuzzy matching to give you those responses. I'm not going to show you that right now because fuzzy matching is quite a, a big topic, but it is really useful if you have names that could be spelled differently or misspelled, or sometimes they say Mr., sometimes they don't, things like that. So I'm going to press OK and do the same step. So click on those, remove other columns. I prefer that to the remove columns um, because it gives you this pod where you can edit, the other one doesn't. So in this, two. Then I will add a custom column. And I'm going to say in this So now I have four types of errors, <laughs> but I just want them on one list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Home tab, Append, Append Queries as new. And I'm going to append those four that we created, not the base ones, but I'm going to go to three or more tables and click on all of these like that. Press OK. And it will create a new query. And this is going to be our errors loading query. This is going to be the one that loads, actually. The others are not going to load. I can rename this with error 5, like that. And 
I'm kind of good to go there. This is basically showing me how it should look. Uh, let me make this text, and then I should see this pop up here. So now I can see what type of errors there are. I like this column profiling thing. It's basically like done a count if for me without me even trying. And if you have errors or blanks, it can also help you in this setting. So um, I'll go to the View tab and the Query Dependencies. And I find this quite useful to see what's happened. Basically, both queries are from the current workbook. And then this one is linked to, if I click on it, it's linked to this one duplicate and this one not to. And all of them are going into errors loading step. So in list two, not one, has actually lines, links between list two and list one step. And then they all come into this one. So yeah, that's a queries dependency view. All right, now I'm going to close and load. Um, before you do that though, it's important that you turn on this setting. So options and settings and then query settings. So I have this by default, but if you don't do this, then it's going to be load every single one of your queries, whereas you just want this last load. So go to specify custom load settings and untick both of these. So that the default is to not load anything. Um, I have this permanently on, and I recommend most people have it permanently on, particularly for this kind of scenario. We don't want eight uh, seven sheets of data, we just want the one. So I'm going to close and load, and then it will just load them as queries. Like it's done here. And the final step that we're going to do is we're going to right click on errors loading and choose for this one to load to a table in a new worksheet. So this is the only one we want loaded there. There we go. Nice. So now it's only showing me the errors. This is dynamic, so if new data comes in, if, uh, let's see the people who I couldn't match. See, this one says it can't match it, but that's actually because this one has the double space, so that's a mistake that it can't match it. Um, let's go for this one, so let's say here that I had, well, I do actually there have a thing, like if I replace that, then that changes it here. And here, this one should go away when I right click and I refresh. There you go. So it is linked dynamically, even with new rows that are entered. Um, that fuzzy matching capability could have learned that as well. But um, it's difficult to show that in this short video. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to show you. So thank you for watching.